Hello Unity fans, this is JNM with a tutorial about character animation, interaction and game design. As an example, I use a scene of my game Irwin's Time Warp in which Irwin the dog has to use the elevator to enter the roof. He needs some help, but as you can see, his pal Herbert has no implementation to use the lever for lifting the platform. Very bad, but fortunately our game design is flexible enough to rebuild this requirement. So let's have a look at the lever script, which derives from an internal class of my framework called iInteractable. It comes with an array parameter to define which characters are allowed to interact. So I set the size to 2 and drag Irvin and Herbert as allowed characters to the slots. Ok, let's have a look. Now I select Herbert as the player and he's able to interact. But as you can see, Irvin executes the animation. Quite funny, but not what we want. So let's have a look at the lever script. It is derived from iInteractable and it has a use method that is called when a character tries to use an interactable object. In this use method, the move lever method is executed, in which also the elevator is lifted, but it is calling the use method of the base class iInteractable as well. In this method, the animation for picking up items is played, but the player controller class is used for that, which is a script for Irwin the dog, not for the current player. Alright, before I show the design idea, let's have a look at the animator controllers of these two guys. Irwin has a pick animation for interacting with items at the bottom and Herbert has a similar animation that I want to use for that and it is called push low. Let's select this animation and play it. Yeah, this should work. Alright, here's the design idea. The player controller is derived from a base class I created called iCharacter and Herbert, the monster, is derived from iCompanion, which also has the base class iCharacter. Great, let's use this class hierarchy to our advantage. I will add a new method to this common base class for playing the animation of the animator controller and call it doPick. This method will be defined as a virtual method, I explain this later on. The implementation is empty. Now let's open the player controller and override this method. It is already there, but we have to use the keyword override. This method, as before, plays the animation pick. Now I'll copy this implementation and switch to the monster. Then I override also for this one, the method do pick. Type in override and Visual Studio helps us here to find the method of the base class. Now we can just paste in the implementation of the player controller, copied a little bit too much. I just need the animator play, but I don't play the pick animation. We play the push low animation for the monster. Now we can use the power of common base classes. We don't call the use method anymore. We have a character manager class that holds all iCharacter instances and is able to get the current player for us. And the currently selected player is an iCharacter class. To that we added the doPick method, which we are now going to call. And now the animation isn't called for Irwin, it is called for the player that is currently selected. Alright, so let's start the game and test our design. I set Herbert to be the player. He's able to interact. And the animation is played and not for Urban. Great. Then I let the dog be the player. Move to the platform. And now lift him up. This works really nice and now he's able to investigate what might be on this roof. What I wanted to point out here is that it is really essential to have a good and extendable design so that you can build in new features 
without having to rewrite main parts of your application. Okay guys, in the end let me give you a short overview of this design pattern as a simplified class diagram. We have a character manager that holds a list of all iCharacter objects. Irvin and Herbert have derived classes from this iCharacter base class. This base class has a virtual method doPick for playing the animations for picking up items. It has to be virtual to give the derived classes the possibility to override it. This means that I can store iCharacter objects in my character manager, but the concrete classes are Irvin or the monster. This doPick method will be called for the particular implementation of the currently selected player. So the big advantage is here if I have a new character, for example a snake, I only need to derive it from iCharacter and add it to the list of the character manager. That's all. Guys, I hope you liked this kind of videos about game design and if you do, then please let me know. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel to be up to date when new tutorials arrive. Thanks a lot for watching and I hope you come back soon to JNM.